Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, gentlemen. Ha. And uh, welcome to yet another Moore Audio Micro Pedal Review. And at this rate, you would probably think that I'm sponsored by these guys because this is the second one I've done in the past couple of months. I'm not, though at this rate, I uh, probably wouldn't mind it because I am so in love with some of their products they've been coming out with recently. Today, we're going to take a look at the Baby Bomb 30. Returning viewers of the channel probably caught my Cali Mark III review, which is one of Moore's micro preamp pedals. This one in particular models the Mesa Boogie Mark III, and today's pedal is going to be a perfect pairing for this if you do intend to play with this thing through a passive speaker cabinet or in some type of live situation. So what exactly is the Baby Bomb 30? Well, as many of you probably know, a traditional guitar amplifier is broken up into two main sections. You have your preamp section, your power amp section. The preamp section, which is being modeled by the micro pedal behind me, the Mark III, is what mainly sculpts your tone. You do get a little bit in the power amp section, but Mostly it's the preamp that's going to, you know, uh, change your gain, change your equalization, all that good stuff. You go into the power amp section to make that loud. If you were just to run a, you know, a signal out of your preamp pedal like I have behind me, it's going to be pretty quiet to the point where you can basically not even hear it if you're running it through some type of passive system like headphones, uh, depending on their impedance, and especially large speaker cabinets. So that's where the baby boom comes in. This is basically your equivalent of the power amp section on an amplifier. So you pair these two together and you have a functional amplifier on your pedal board. And of course, if you had different preamp pedals from either Moore or other brands, you would have a million preamp sections paired with one power amp section. As the name suggests, this is a 30 watt output, which is pretty insane considering the size. A lot of 30 watt Amp heads can range anywhere from about that big to full size, you know, dual rectifier, Marshall, JCM 800 size heads. So to see that 30 watts got squeezed into here is pretty impressive. And as you could probably imagine, this is solid state. This is not a tube uh, power amp, which would be even crazier if they're able to do that. Um, I'm sure the technology is coming, but for the time being, this is solid state. And um, it's not really supposed to sound like a tube, although Moore does claim that there is a bit of sculpting that gives it more of a tube feel. To me, it still sounds very solid state. And while there may be some type of static EQ to try to make it sound more like a tube power section, it still feels like a, a solid state to me, to the point where plugging in an uh, Axe FX or Fractal AX8 into this thing with the tube um, power amp simulation turned off, you can definitely tell. It sounds better turned on, and um, to that point, I think it, you know, it sounds more solid state than not. However, still a really good pairing with this, um, as I feel this was designed in mind with these preamp pedals, so don't let that take away from the experience. You have two, uh, a two-way single switch here between bright and warm, which kind of gives you a bit of an EQ curve. Uh, bright gives you a bump on the high end and warm gives you, I don't even know if it gives you a bump on the low end, but it definitely takes away that, that bright, uh, obviously, high end that you have on the uh, lower selection here. Generally, unless you're playing at bedroom levels, warm is where you're gonna, gonna wanna stick it. And even then, I feel like you're gonna wanna turn the preamp more um, if you're wanting the brighter, less bassy sound. Um, so I would recommend for most stuff keeping it in the warm position, though I can't see. Um, if you want to flip it to the bright. Some power amp pedals that I have seen will have separate controls for like presence and depth like a lot of real power amps will. And uh, while I think that would have been nice if they could have fit it on, um, I just as much like the simplicity of this thing where just keep it on one switch, you have a volume, and that's about it. And I can control everything else from either the preamp or my Fractal AX8 if I so choose. Speaking of volume, one of the only criticisms I've read on this thing is that, well, it is only 30 watts. How useful could that possibly be in a gigging situation? This is probably only going to be a backup pedal, blah, blah, blah. I have played with this in a live situation. Um, about a week after I bought this thing, I went to jam with a local band that played more like classic rock and country, that sort of thing. But we were in a very small, confined space. Um, one of the guitar players was playing through a 30 watt orange, one by 12. I was playing through a Marshall four by 12, a spare that was left there in the practice room. Just with this and my Fractal AX8, another guitarist was playing through a 100 watt Fender uh, 4x12, and I think he even had it reamped to another one. Um, either way, I couldn't turn the volume up past this without drowning out the drums in a confined room. Uh, also, the drums were mic'd and going through a Bose PA system on the outside. Um, so, you know, past 
what would it be the equivalence, I guess, maybe two at most on a you know zero to 10 scale. I don't think you're gonna have issues gigging with this thing, um, even if there is a real drum kit, as long as you have some type of larger speaker cabinet, two by 12 or four by 12, I think it's gonna work. And considering this thing does work on either eight ohm or 16 ohm inputs, I think you're golden. Um, if the drums are mic'd, you should probably have some type of direct in or a mic set up on your cabinet as well to you know go through the, the, the house speakers. But 30 watts is is more than enough to gig with in a lot of situations, unless you're in some huge space that it's going to get lost in the mix somewhere. But for practice, for most people that would be interested in a $100 power amp, yeah, I don't think volume is going to be your concern. Here in my apartment, I can't go past that <laughs> without uh, starting to shake the walls and you know being a little a little too obnoxious to the neighbors. So I don't think volume is going to be a real issue with this thing. My only real complaint with this, if I had to give one, is its unusual power supply. Now, I kind of get why. Uh, you're putting 30 freaking watts in something this small, um, and to achieve that, they had to use a proprietary 24 volt power supply versus what would normally be a nine volt that you could use like on a one spot for, for the other pedals. And um, while you could use a different 24 volt, two amp power supply, they do recommend this one, obviously, and um, it is a bit unfortunate that you do have a, another power brick, but I would much rather have this external than add it onto the pedal because this saves a lot of room on your board. You could you know, probably tape it to your pedal board and get an extension for this if you were really, really worried about this sticking out somewhere. Um, for me personally, this works just fine. Um, there's usually enough junk going near where the uh, power outlets are anyway that it's not gonna make a difference. So I'm fine with the sacrifice they had to make it would have been great if I could have still use my one spot that I use for everything else. I'm sure that will come at some point down the, down the road uh, when these type of parts become more efficient. But um, yeah, I, I think overall they did a very solid job with this thing. And without further ado, let's see what it does sound like through a Mesa Boogie 4x12 dual rectifier cabinet mic'd up with a classic SM57. Enjoy. <laughs> the Moore Baby Bomb powered by the Cali Mark III. And I think there's a compelling argument here in this combination. If you only have a couple hundred bucks, which these things are combined, I believe 210, this is a little over 100, 109, if I remember correctly, off Reverb, which is the only place I could find it at the time being, I think you're better off buying something like this than some of the other amp heads that are on the market. There are some other compelling options. Um, stuff like JoYo has the zombie amplifier, which I think is around $200 to $300, but anything of those micro heads 
are pretty much solid state. Uh, they may have a tube preamp or a tube power amp in a solid state, but you're not gonna get a full tube amp at that cost. I personally think for the money, you're better off spending a hundred bucks on this. That way you have something to play um, through recording software and practice uh, through headphones, assuming that you do have another pedal or something else that will um, achieve the loudness you need through, through headphones. And then you can always buy this later down the road or if you already have a speaker cabinet, what, whatever, to expand upon your rig to have something to gig with and practice with. And then later on, you can buy more preamp pedals. I don't think this is gonna be any replacement for a hardcore enthusiast that's like, I've gotta have my dual rectifier with six L6s, I gotta have my Marshall with the EL34s, I gotta have this, you know some type of Engel with KT88s. But for the average Joe, this is where it's at, I feel like right now, for um, spending your money wisely if you are on a budget. Because for 200 bucks, this sounds, <laughs> well, you know, considering that is a $1,000 speaker cabinet, didn't pay that much, thankfully. But if you do have a spare speaker cabinet, I feel like you could spend 300 bucks on one used pair of these, and uh, you've already got a better amp setup than most solid states could ever dream of being. So, conclusion time. If you're a fan of the Moore preamp pedals, I would highly recommend this thing if you need to play through a set of passive speakers. There are competitors on the market, some in the 40 to 50 watts, that are bigger pedals. And for the size, uh, the footprint that this thing leaves on a pedal board, and the cost, you pay about two-thirds for about three-quarters of the wattage is what I've found uh, as far as the rest of the industry goes. You do uh, lose some of the fineness, like with presence and depth controls, but to me, good enough. Uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. And even if this isn't something that you would be using uh, every day, like I do not, uh, it's great to have as a spare. It's great to even substitute for a full-blown, you know, higher wattage power supply if you're not going that route at this time. So, yeah, uh, really liking what you're doing with your stuff, Moore. If you come out with some type of OD pedal, I'd be really happy with that. Um, I'm sure they have some stuff right now, but uh, something along this line that uh, could replace even my uh, TS9 Tube Screamer, and I'm still, I want another line of these. I really do. I still want like a Randall Satan and a dual rectifier and some other stuff like that. But um, yeah, keep up the good work. I'm really enjoying the products, and uh, I'm going to have to redo my pedal board again, uh, but whatever. My, my plan is hopefully just make like a solid wall at the bottom of nothing but ODs and and dry pedals and that sort of thing to uh, act as a backup, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, Moore's got me excited about pedals again, which uh, congratulations on that. So yeah, very good product. And uh, I would recommend to anyone that likes these things and needs to play through a passive set of speakers. So hope you like that. And uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, as always, please leave them below. I'll try to get to them ASAP. And uh, if you have any other experiences with different brands of power amp pedals, please let me know. I'd like to know how it compares. And uh, other than that, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.